Welcome back, Stanley Harawas here to the interview chair. So Stanley, what's, what's all this narrative, 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 narrative well, stuff? Well, um, it has to do with uh, Atheist Ain't Got No Song, uh, <laughs> partly because they, um, I mean, it's very interesting. C could we be Christians if we couldn't sing the faith? It's a very, it's a, and to sing the faith means that you are storied in a way that otherwise is impossible because you become part of God's chorus. My way of putting these matters is <clears throat> uh, um, modernity names the time of trying to produce people who believe they should have no story except the story they chose when they had no story. Uh, that's called freedom. Um, you should have no story except the story you chose when you had no story. And if you don't believe that's your story, <clears throat> I can illustrate it this way. Do you think you ought to be held responsible for decisions you made when you did not know what you were doing? No, you don't think you should be held responsible for decisions you made when you did not know what you were doing. The only difficulty with that, of course, is it makes marriage unintelligible. Because, uh, I mean, how could you ever have known what you were doing when you promised lifelong monogamous fidelity? Uh, if it makes marriage unintelligible, try having children. You never get the ones you want. So, <laughs> and of course the irony of that you should have no story except the story you chose when you had no story is you didn't choose that story. <laughs> that, uh, that you didn't choose that story helps you understand that's world. Christians are people who believe that we were storied. We didn't choose the story. We're creatures of a good God who gave us something to do to witness to the glory of God through the cross and resurrection of Christ. Now that cross and resurrection of Christ stories the world and us and that is constantly repeated in the liturgies that we have as Christians. That's the reason why, for example, the church year is so important. If you didn't have if you didn't have Advent, you'd be stuck with Thanksgiving. I mean, wouldn't that, I mean, you'd be stuck with family. <laughs> <laughs> so ex exactly the liturgy of the church, of the church year, Advent, we're in Lent now, for those of you in the Church of Christ. I, uh, <clears throat> I, I grew up in Texas. I, I had to deal with the Church of Christ. I mean, I... Um, You've gone too far now. No, I, I always liked it during Texas droughts when they couldn't find living water. <laughs> it, it, was, uh, it was what they deserved. <laughs> right. Uh, but, uh, so... I mean, Lent, Lent's a very important um, uh, part of the church year in which we uh, prepare uh, to go through Ash Wednesday and recognize from dust we came and from dust we will return. And then to have that dust be made part of the body of Christ through death and resurrection is... Um, how we recognize who we are, how we're storied in a way that gives us a life of beauty. Because beauty is absolutely crucial to our living well. And there is nothing more disastrous for the Christian church today than the ugliness of our liturgies. Elegance is important, and that's what we got out of the habit of just to the extent that churches thought they had to compete with TV. And TV will always win because it's better at what it does than we are. But we're not TV. We're a liturgical body of people who have been trained to have our bodies habituated to bend in the face 
of the body and blood of Christ. Hmm. That'll preach right there. I hope so. Yeah. So um, for someone who says things like America's not the issue, you talk about America a lot. So why, did, why if America's not the issue, why do you talk about America a lot? I'm an American. It's, it, I hate to say that. I, I mean, I, I've made a, I've made a um, um, career out of claiming I'm not an American because I was raised in Pleasant Grove, Texas. <clears throat> By the way, your Texas accent ain't bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, uh, and so um, I'm a Texan before I was an American. But in truth, we're, we're Americans, and I owe it to my brothers and sisters, Christian and non-Christian, to try to share the life I've been given that makes me, first and foremost, a follower of Christ rather than an American citizen, and that bonds me with people around the world. I mean, people forget, before you had the language of globalization, we Christians had a language for that. It was called Catholic. <laughs> we were bonded together with people across the world through the Eucharistic celebration in a way that defeated nationalistic boundaries. So I'm an American, but I have to serve as an American in a way that helps be of service to other Christians in the world by not letting America beat them up, I suppose. We're grateful you've been with us tonight. Please share your thanks for Professor Stanley Harwash. Thank you.